So in this problem, we have x of t equals sine of 1,000 pi t over pi t. And we are asked to find the Nyquist rate of this signal. So like all problems like this, knowing the Nyquist rate or finding the Nyquist rate boils down to finding the highest frequency content of the signal. So let's think about this. First of all, remember the definition that we use for the sinc function. The sinc function is sine of x over x. And if we had a sinc function, then we can go look up in our Fourier transform table what the Fourier transform of that function is. So if you recall, we have w over pi, sinc of wt, in time domain, yields a frequency domain representation of rectangle function omega over 2w. So since we have an x of t that kind of looks like a sinc, kind of the strategy for this problem is to manipulate it into a sinc function format. So then we can just look up the Fourier representation of this signal in a table, and then we'll know the frequency content of the signal. So let's go ahead and manipulate x of t into this sinc format. So here's what we have. x of t is sine of 1,000 pi t over pi t. And we can change this around a little bit. What I'm going to do is I really wish that I had a 1,000 pi t on the denominator because the definition of a sinc is you need to have sine x over x. So whatever's in the argument of the sine in the numerator, you really need in the denominator. Well, I don't have 1,000 pi t. So if I force 1,000 down there, I need to have a 1,000 out front to cancel out, to undo putting the 1,000 down there to keep the problem the same. So now that I've done that, this part right here is sinc of 1,000 pi t. So I've gotten a sinc into the problem. So I can rewrite that as 1,000 sinc of 1,000 pi t. Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. If you'll notice in the definition or the Fourier transform pair, what I really need is some number over pi times sinc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force myself to have a pi underneath. But to undo that, I put another pi out front, so I haven't changed anything. All I've done is multiply by 1. But now this quantity right here is exactly in my table. So if I use the table result, this right here is of the form w over pi sinc of wt, where w is equal to 1,000 pi. So all I have to do is grab the result from the table, rectangle of omega over 2 w, and replace w with the value it is in this problem, which is 1,000 pi. So I've done that. So I now know that the frequency domain representation of x of t is x of omega equals pi times rectangle omega over 2,000 pi. If I plot that, what does that look like? Well, it's a function of omega, and the rectangle function is a function of omega, and the total width of the function is 2,000 pi. So this is a rectangle that goes from minus 1,000 pi to 1,000 pi, and the amplitude is just the coefficient out front, the pi, so it has amplitude pi. So now it's really easy to tell what the maximum frequency content of this signal is. I can just look at it. The maximum radial frequency is 1,000 pi. So this means the largest or maximum linear frequency is omega max over 2 pi, or 1,000 pi over 2 pi, which if I work that out, that's 500 hertz. So the signal x of t that we were given has a maximum frequency of 500 hertz. So now we can use our Nyquist sampling theory. It's very simple. The Nyquist frequency is just 2 times the maximal frequency. So 2 times f max is 2 times 500, which is 1,000 hertz. So we have solved for the Nyquist rate of this signal. Just like all problems like this, to do this, you need to know what the frequency content is so you can identify the largest frequency component. For this problem, that involved using a Fourier transform table and doing a little algebraic manipulation so we could just look up the Fourier domain representation of the signal. But once we'd done that, finding omega max and equivalently f max was very easily, and then we just multiply by 2. That's the end of this problem.